and salutations, Sir Javians. Welcome back to another stream. It is good to see you all once again today. It is yet another episode of DJ Sergey. DJ Sergey, Sergey, Sergey. Yeah, I'm really, really loving this um, new persona that I have, and I'm really, really thankful that I actually have um, something like this to go for, and I really hope that you are enjoying it too. <laughs> well, once again, it is a beautiful Saturday morning here in the Philippines, Saturday, November 5 at 9.16 a.m. That time check was brought to you by Sir J. Sveck. And if you want to go ahead and um, follow me more and check out more progress of the DJ Sergey episodes, why don't you go ahead and follow my channel as well? Because I'm planning to make this more of a regular thing on my channel. If I'm not going to be doing gaming streams, then I'm going to try doing this. That's why, if you've um, noticed, I've been trying to do a lot more of these episodes lately, early in the mornings, because I'm trying to find the best time when I think I'll be able to do these just chatting streams. And when I'm done with this week, when I finally start with my new schedule posting, I think I'll have a better idea of when would be the best time to actually go online and do these episodes. Because I really like chatting. And the reception that I've gotten in these past couple of episodes have really told me that it ain't so bad after all. And I can actually do this on the regular, aside from doing my gaming streams. So thanks again, everybody, for all the support. I really, really appreciate you uh, making me a part of your day. And I hope that we'll be able to enjoy our time together and have some fun. Okay, so we're going to be doing this moving along here. And thank you again for dropping by. I hope you all had some great Saturday's uh, weekend plans up with you for me. As some of you may know, I work the night shift, so I have to go ahead and do work tonight. But I'm just trying to do this because we're trying to unwind, we're trying to take it easy. You know, there's a lot of things that will be happening later on tonight, at least for me. When the clock strikes 12 and stuff is happening, you know that I'm going to be up there and watching and seeing what's happening on the night. But for those of you who are going to be enjoying the day, I hope that you always take care, even though there's no need for most of us to go to school or to work. I hope that you still take care when you go out if you need to do anything that you have to. And also that you'll be able to do all of the different things that you need to do, especially before we get back to the weekdays, because, well... <laughs> Unfortunately, we only have two days in a week to be able to accomplish all that we wanted to. And now that I am much older and working, unfortunately, that is not much time to actually do the things that I want. <laughs> you know, I realized as a kid, I thought, oh, I sh I'm going to be really excited to work. I want to be able to actually do stuff. I want to be able to practice doing this. I want to be able to get money. I want to be able to buy all the stuff that I want. But the thing is, you know, now that I am actually working and I have been working for a number of years now, I realize that, yeah, sure, I have the money. I have the capacity to actually buy stuff that I want. But unfortunately, I don't have all the time in the world to actually enjoy it. <laughs> Just look at my gaming backlog already. I don't have much time to stream as much as I would love to be able to stream every single day. It's not possible at my current job and that's fine too um it's become a bit of a hot topic on twitter lately that enough that there are people out there who are telling you that if you really if that if you do not stream full-time as a vtuber are you really going to worth calling yourself a vtuber well that's a question we're going to be getting in a bit, but for now, I would like to acknowledge the presence of our latest Surjavian, Kuro Sawada. Thank you very much for dropping by and finally caught my stream. Why, thank you, thank you, and good morning, good morning, and welcome. 
to the stream. Welcome to another episode of Early Mornings with DJ Sergey. DJ Sergey, Sergey, Sergey. One of these days, I really am going to try and get make my own soundboard so I don't always have to keep repeating this line. <laughs> Mylis, thank you very much always for um, the support and for passing by. Sure, um, I know you already told me what you need to do, so feel free to go ahead and take care of what you need to do as well. So thanks very much for that. Why did I put r slash shout out? Is this... <laughs> this is not Reddit. I am so sorry. Okay, hold on. Wait, let me, let me do it properly. Kurosawada, let me just do that for a second. Boom, there we go. Much, much better. We recently just um, met, and I'm really thankful that I actually got into your streams and we were able to follow each other. You're a very entertaining streamer. If you want to go ahead and get some entertainment, um, why don't you go ahead and follow Kuro? It's really, really great. And um, let's see what else. Okay, so yeah, what we were talking about just now is, you know, how difficult things are now that you know we're working um, as much as I would love to do uh, VTubing a lot um, on the regular basis I well I can't <laughs> and I said that's fine you know sometime you know we don't have the same 24 hours each of us you know we all have our own priorities our own obligations you know someone has to pay the bills in the family and that is me <laughs> and I I have no problem with it because you know we have to do what we have to do and I'm thankful that VTubing has become my hobby I do admit that I want it to be a job uh, I would like it to be my full-time job, but there's always that worry that, you know, if you make it your job, you have to, you, now you have to stress over what used to be your passion, you know? Um, I actually had a friend, of, an artist friend of mine recently, and he, um, he's a wonderful artist, but he drew this drawing recently and it said, like, my passion is now my prison, something like that. And it's, and it's heartbreaking to see, you know, people who are like the artists, the musicians and stuff. And when they finally get a job with that, with that work that they thought that they grew up loving, they get burnt out and tired out of it, right? It's sad. But, well, that's just how it is sometimes when you try to make your hobby or your passion into a job. You know, sometimes you do get burnt out. And for me, thankfully, I'm still treating uh, VTubing as a hobby. And, uh, but we'll see again. We, we're never really assured of what's gonna happen. So maybe in the future, we'll see. Uh, and um, going back to some comments. Oh, wow, you're making me blush. Ha, thank you so much. You're very, very welcome, Kuro. And um, thank you as well for being very welcoming of me in your streams. And I hope that you are doing well. I did see uh, some of your tweets actually just um, just now. I hope you're doing well and um, that you'll be able to get um, that you'll be able to do well because I did see uh, what you wrote. Yeah, so I don't need to go. I don't need to dwell onto it that much, but I hope you'll be OK. Myla says, his voice bursts a thousand cherubim with the horns of Jericho combined with a baby's whisper in a flower field in the middle of summer. Myla's once again with a very, very poetic language. If you want to go ahead and follow, if you want to go ahead and get more into it, actually, Myla's is not only my good friend, but he is also my artist. So if you want to go ahead and um, check out his work, I put it in the chat right there. You can go ahead and check it out because amazing, amazing. He takes care of my logo, my avatar, my overlays, everything. So he is pretty much a one man team behind the brand of Sir J. Svek. So go ahead and show him some Sir Javian Nation love and it's greatly appreciated. That is sad, Mila says. When you do art, make sure you have time to do personal passion work. That's your gauge, yes. Um, I know there are some people who are so swamped with commissions, with um, other projects that are demanded by other people. And 
it gets really, really difficult, you know, trying to, you know, get your own work done because you have to really get so close to your clients, you know, you have to match what they want to do, or the designs you want to do and stuff like that. But there is, it's, it, if you really want to make sure that you are sane, you have to go ahead and um, make time for your own. And that's why sometimes when Miles and I work together on a new project, it's uh, he does specifically state to me that Sergey, um, I have a personal art project that I want to do. Um, let me focus on this first and then we can take care of your commission. And I say, sure, all right, we can go ahead and do that. No problem at all. And I think that's the best thing about having um, an artist friend because you know how to work together and you'll be able to figure out what's the best way things will be done. Spicy Ramen will fix this, but thank you. <laughs> well, Spicy Ramen is a very good way of waking you up. You know, uh, before I forget, I I don't know, Kuro, if you were also involved in the... Uh, in the... what's this? In the Spicy Ramen or the Spicy Noodle Challenge that was popular a few years ago. Um, I was not involved but one time one of my co-workers brought the spicy noodles the samyang level 2 spicy noodles and then um they said sergey go ahead and try it and i took a very tiny bit of the noodle and then i put it in my mouth and i was sweating as if i was sweating a river trust me and I tried everything. I drank milk. I cup. I went to the. I went to the sink and covered my entire head with water. Nothing helped. So, I. It was a nightmare. In short, <laughs> I'm sure my other coworkers enjoyed it. Oh, that's why I started eating it. The spicy ramen, I guess. I didn't do the challenge per se. I just wanted to try it out because I love spicy food. And you know what? I admire you for that. Um, one person that I really admire as well is my sister. Um, because she... There is this restaurant called Buffalo Wings and Things. And they have a board on of all the customers that finished their spiciest wing flavor. And if you're able to, um, so the challenge is that there's like five wings, five wings of the spiciest sauce. You have to eat all of that, no water. And then af after you're done eating, you have to wait for five more minutes. And after that, if you're able to finish all of that, you get your picture on the board. And speaking of board, my sister was bored with the challenge. She did not break a single sweat. She was actually, she actually thought it was boring. So, and if even if I just like put my finger in the sauce and took a tiny lick of it, I was sweating like a bullet. But over the years, I actually tried to um, increase my tolerance to spicy food. And I can now eat habanero. Um, I have tried scotch bonnet also, which is like the Jamaican super spicy pepper. And even some ghost pepper too. I, I do still uh, feel like I'm gonna die, but not that much. It's like 50% about to die instead of 150. <laughs> Kuro says, I love the art of Myla's. Well, Myla's is really amazing. Did you know that Myla's was actually featured in Graphica Manila? The art, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Myla's. Myla's was featured in the Graphica Manila art collection magazine three years in a row at least so that's just how good he is and uh saw your retreat we my, my english retweet new art of Milas, and it was really good yes it really was no Milas, i did not whip you last week to finish the avatar no that's your imagination bro you were hanging you were threatening to cut off the commission during one of my splatoon streams i remember that 
I remember that. <laughs> if you don't go ahead and do this challenge, Sir J, I'm gonna cut off the commission. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. But yeah, um, you know, sometimes these things like building your spice tolerance and, you know, trying to improve as a VTuber or in work or something like that. But yeah, it's uh, it just takes time. It takes practice. Um, I'll just read this comment. Myla says, we submitted art to be featured, I think, five times already. Two times this year since they had two events. I see. I always thought it was a yearly thing, but apparently I it's different. <sighs> my throat you know what I could I could use some spicy ramen right now some good old ramyun not the shin ramyun you know the red and black one that is holy cow <laughs> spicy um it reminds me of when I went to Korea a few years ago did you know it was only when I was in Korea that I found out that Koreans love cheese seriously love cheese like in um, in 7-elevens what they had to do is that they actually have bags of grated cheese in their 7-elevens they also have their ramen of course the cup noodles but they also have uh, cups of already boiled rice and they just go ahead and put that in the microwave and microwave it before we continue, um, hello Sword Berries, good morning, and welcome back to another episode of Early Mornings with DJ Sergey. DJ Sergey, Sergey, Sergey. Hope you're having a good Saturday morning, November 5, 2022. That time on 9:32 a.m. That time check was brought to you by me. <laughs> So going back to Graphica Manila, it's the first time they had two events in a year since one is online and one is mid-year physical. I see, I see. Okay, thanks for clearing that up. Um, so we're talking about the what we were talking about my trip to Korea a few years ago, and I mentioned that uh, Koreans love cheese, so they have packs of grated cheese in their 7-Elevens, and they even have ready-made rice and cup noodles. So what they would do uh, before we go to the stretch, let me just I'll just finish a story before I forget is that you could go to the microwave and then before you put in the hot water for your cup noodles, usually they would tear open the bag of grated cheese and put it there on top of the noodles and the seasoning. And then they would put the boiling water so that the cheese would melt like quick melt. That was a, an amazing combination. And you know what? They even did the same with that rice that I mentioned. They would put the cheese on top, open up the pack of rice bowl. They would put the cheese on top and then they would put it in the microwave in the 7-Eleven. And it's a self-service microwave. And then after that, you get melted cheese on rice. So this is like the Korean version of star rice. <laughs> I have no idea if... Uh, kids in the Philippines these days still do star rice because if they don't that just shows my age unfortunately so now I'm going to I'm gonna go ahead and follow your stretch redeem oh yeah I really need that for my back <sighs> really had really had a lot very hard did something really challenging at the gym earlier goodness gracious ah Lower back, lower back, lower back, Sergey. Make sure you don't damage your lower back. Suck in that gut. Ah, <sighs> yeah. So yeah, cheese rice is a thing. And for those of you who are not familiar um, with what star rice is, star rice is when you put star margarine. That's the that's the brand name. Star margarine and on top of hot rice, and then it would melt. And that was a really popular thing in the in the 90s is that they had you know kids would be encouraged by their parents if you want to have good healthy food um, if you want to give all your kids all your vitamins and minerals put some star margarine on top of their rice 
But it was only when I grew up that I learned that margarine is not the most, the healthiest thing. You might as well just put like a slab, uh, like a slice of butter on it, like the Persians do in Persians restaurants. It'll be a lot healthier that way compared to the margarine. Swordberry says, I stretched first thing I woke up and I cramped my shoulder. Oh no. Oh no. I, I hope it's feeling, I hope it's better now at least because that's just like the worst, that's just like the worst way to actually really wake up. Because when you wake up, sometimes you still feel like, you know, sleepy, like, oh, I want to go back to bed. But when you finally decide to stretch and maybe move those muscles, then you get you get really woken up by a cramp. Goodness gracious. I never got a cramped shoulder, but more often than not, I had a Charlie horse. You know, the cramp that happens right at the back of your calf on your leg. You know, I'm like, oh, good morning, world. It's good to see you. I stretch my leg and... <laughs> so, yeah, that's the name. You know, the leg, the leg cramp, they have a name for it. It's called the Charlie horse, apparently. So, you know, if you want to sound, if you, if you really want to impress your friends, it's like, oh, oh my gosh, my leg is cramping. Ah, he's got a Charlie horse. There. <laughs> You go ahead and watch your friends, they, they do the nay nay. <laughs> go, if, oh my gosh, how am I supposed to cure to fix this cramp on my leg? You do the nay nay. <laughs> Not that nay nay, the nay nay, the horse nay. <laughs> okay. The Charlie part, it's it's like the toy, Mylas. You know how in the old, in the olden days, back in those days when they did not have video games, they had toy horses that were like rocking. Sort of like the rocking chair horse. I think that's the Charlie where the Charlie horse name came from. But it's mostly like that. So um, another one that Mylas said was the worst cramps I had waking at the middle of the night with those calf cramps. Yeah. Oh goodness. There's it it's it's just horrible right there. Hey Siri, how to use Sergey Twitch stream as an alarm like it's a radio show? <laughs> you know actually Swordberries, um that's the whole point of these um streams early in the morning because I'm actually I actually want to have this as a regular segment of my stream schedule. Um because I, I want to do practice more of my just chatting. And I don't, I sometimes when I come home from work, I don't want to go, I don't want to play games. I would just want to talk. And maybe I can have this like twice a week. So like Thursdays, because Thursdays, my I don't go to the gym. That's the time my coach says, okay, Sergey, relax. You have to have a rest day. You're not supposed to exercise every single day, okay? So Thursdays, I have time off to stream. And maybe Saturday too, because on Saturdays, at least right now, I have the day off from work. I mean, I, mean, I stay home because I still have work tonight, but I stay home. Oh, speaking of games, yes, uh, Sword Berries, what did you want to say? Oh yes, Sword Berries got the S rank up game last night. And yes, if you want to uh, follow some skilled um, Splatoon gameplay, why don't you go ahead and follow Sword Berries? And they also do an amazing job in the Salmon Run mode. And just yesterday, they got the... Uh, what's this? S rank, which is the highest rank so far. Well, at least until X rank comes in, and then you can go all Wakanda forever again. You know, some people actually... Um, I saw this post, Swordberries, and I don't know how, what you think about this, but when X rank comes in, they should have the X rank pose as a special winning pose. As a, as a winning pose available if you win a match. So at least you don't have to do it on the waiting screen anymore because we, because we don't have a waiting screen in Splatoon 3 now. But at least if you have the X rank, you might as well just dap, you know, flex on him. <laughs> yeah. 
I like I prefer I prefer just sticking to salmon run because I prefer earning my money instead of playing those childish turf war tournament games. <laughs> making making money being paid in gotcha. <laughs> ah boy. Yeah. Good good to know Sword Bears that you're around. And yeah, she does stream regularly on Sundays, I believe. Splatoon, and we do uh salmon run. Sergey, when you fish, let me know. I will bring Raph. Okay, I will go ahead and do that. I need more of Raph's tutelage. Indeed. Okay, and uh Yeah, but also acknowledging the fact that Splatoon is one of the big reasons why I wanted to start streaming. It's just, unfortunately, I only started streaming way after my Splatoon competitive mode in Splatoon 2 start what ended. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays, yeah, go ahead and check Swordberries out. If you want to see how Splatoon is done. Now, um, on my end, I'm just uh, I'm just uh, using again. I'm going back to what mentioned earlier. I'm using this time as like a practice, so that when I draft my schedule for the next week, I have an idea of what to do. So, when do I want to play the games? When do I want to do my talk, my DJ Sergey segments? So yeah, I want to go ahead and see. Uh, I want to go ahead and figure this out so that by the next time, by next week, I know when to have it a host. Because I, I believe that... So I actually am surprised that people turn up to my just chatting streams. Because uh, I, I observe a bunch of other Philippine VTubers who are just chatting. They are amazing. And especially for those who like are able to offer advice when it comes to love and life and stuff. They're very wise, very smart. I'm not. <laughs> I consider intelligence different from being smart. I, I know how to regurgitate the lessons that I learned from books and in school, but li practical life experience is a work in progress. <laughs> but I acknowledge my limitations, but so don't ask me for love advice. Don't ask me for... <laughs> don't ask me how to deal with your relationships, okay? Ask me what is the meaning of this and useless trivia, and I could probably answer that. That's what people come to my streams for. Memes and trivia. Oh, we're bringing D&D &D terms now, huh? Love advice is charisma. Ah. Int and whiz. Intelligence and wisdom. That's true. And you know, since you mentioned D&D &D terms and all of these RPG terms, I keep getting tempted, you know? A lot of the, of the VTubers that I follow, they like playing Final Fantasy XIV. Did you know the, the amazing Final Fantasy XIV that is three, free until level 60? That's blah, 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 blah. Like, <laughs> that meme post. And I'm like... Do I want to go back to Genshin Impact, or do I want to try Final Fantasy XIV? So, yeah. It's okay, Sword Berries. I, I'm merciful. I only know the first part of the meme. So, you don't have to worry about that. Ew, Sergey, can you tweet me how to quiz? <laughs> I don't offer that kind of advice, my Liz. That's... That is beyond my scope. Thank you, Swordberries. Bonk him, if you please. <laughs> I wish there is a way to redeem spec coins so I can bonk my mods sometimes. <laughs> or anyone else in chat who is acting naughty naughty. You know, we try to be family friendly here in the Sergey Spec channel. Try is the operative term. Oh, but again, thanks again for the redeem earlier, Sword Berries. My back is feeling better. But I'm in love. If you're in love, then why don't you go ahead and deal with it on your own, bro? This is my channel is not equipped to deal with these things. 
all right? <laughs> Thank you, Swordberries. You know what? I'm gonna make you my mod just because of that. <laughs> <laughs> you bonk, you bonk the naughty mods. <laughs> have you played D and D, Sergey? No, I have not. The um, I actually have not, but I have thought about it too. Um, one of my one of my um, high school friends he actually invited us to try D and D, but I never really got into it because it felt. I don't know. At least from the outside looking in, it seems that there's like a lot of things to manage in D&D. You know, you have all those papers, you have to worry about dice, random dice rolls, all the stats and everything, and I pity the game master. <laughs> Swordberries would be honored to be a mod. <laughs> well, uh, we'll go ahead and work on that. Swordberries says, You seem to be like the type who'd be a walking player's handbook. Well, I'm pretty much a walking reference from TV Tropes website, if that's, if that's what you mean. <laughs> a lot of my knowledge, if it doesn't come from Wikipedia, it comes from uh, TV Tropes. Uh, but duh, 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 duh. Help, but that's literally what the game masters love to do. Oh uh, wait, I'm oh, sorry. Help, they help newbies. And Mila says, "Isn't the game master the fun part? You get to spill out your creative juices." Yeah, that's true. But if you have like this masterful campaign written out in your head, and you really want to share, you want to let um, your players experience it, but they derail it in the weirdest way possible. <laughs> That's weird. <laughs> but I don't know, that's just, that's just me. That's just me. You know, from the outside looking in, if I if I'm the game master of Dungeons and Dragons and I have this masterful story written out and then somebody says, "Can I kiss the goblin boss?" <laughs> and I'm like, "Oh god. They're they're ruining my campaign." <laughs> So, yeah, I would just like to acknowledge the presence of Crispy. Good morning and welcome to your first um, catching into DJ Sergey. DJ Sergey, Sergey. And welcome again, Crispy, for drop. And thank you again for dropping by. Glad to have you early in the morning on November 5, this beautiful Saturday morning. This time check was brought to you by Miles's work. <laughs> Oh yes, and Crispy was also streaming last night too. Uh, we, what was that? Strand, Wayward Strand, I believe it was. Oh, that was a very pretty game, and I think, and I had a feeling that Milas would love that, loves that type of art style. You know, he's the more the one that really loves like the handcrafted, stylized art. So, definitely something that fits his way. Uh, going backtracking a bit. Um, if the GM, if the game master hates it when the players derail the campaign, they're not a, they're a bad GM. Okay. <laughs> the game master is the most stressful part. We study before the sessions. I see, I see. Wait a second, what did Mylas do? Okay. Spill out, oh, the spill out the creative juices part, of course. All right. <laughs> Never make a one-way track in Dungeons & Dragons. Just go with the flow and play with your players, not against them. Yes, that's true. You gotta... You gotta... You know, it's a two-way street. Oh gosh, this reminds me of when I was teaching back in the day. Tutoring, sorry. Tutoring is the correct term I should use because I, I don't have a teaching license. So I don't want to step on the toes of my teacher's friend, teacher friends who actually did work for their degrees. But you know, it's like communication. Communication is a two-way street. Or education is, isn't just teacher telling student what to do. The student has to communicate with the teacher and it's also environment as well. If the environment is not in conducive to education, if there are too many distractions, if it's too noisy, then education cannot occur. Dang, I hate... <laughs> I can't believe I still remember that. 
All right, so um, you're welcome. I always want to shout out my fellow streamers. We want to make sure that we support all of the people um, that support me as well. Um, but yeah, Sergey Sir Swordberry says, in case you'd like to play D and D, I started my high school's underground D and D club, and I introduced my friends to it. So I'm someone you can tap. <laughs> this sounds like Fight Club. Sword berries all of a sudden. It's like, uh, hey, hey, kid, you want to play D and D? <laughs> you show them your dice. Hey, kid, want some dice? <laughs> and they're like, ooh, shiny rocks. And then, yeah, you want to play D and D? I tried to make it an actual club, but what happened? Why did it remain underground? Okay. I actually pushed dice in school. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. You know, peep kids, they can be very, very competitive, or very creative as well. Business minded. Um, some kids actually push dice. Well, there's worse things you could push in school. But Mila's and Mila's would remember that. Um, Mila's and I would remember that we did have an entrepreneurship class, and I don't know what you did in your club in your group, Mila's. But for my group, we sold sandwiches. So, so that was our business proposal. And unfortunately, what Swordbray says, it was a science high school, so they didn't think it was educational enough. Aw, oh, man. That's the sad part right there. My, going back, um, I never play D&D, Myla says, but I think it's a game I'll really dig and enjoy. You know, you know how we make up shenanigans back then, Sergey. We don't have we don't have to think about it back then, Mylas. We still th make shenanigans even at even now. <laughs> Crispy says, "I I really I like D and D. I really do. I find it intimidating though, unless I play in person. Roll twenty is kind of messy for me to understand. I see, I see." And then scrolling down a bit. Crispy says, but I got my very own dice set recently from a friend, so I'd love to try again. I'll say this though, dice, dice sets are really pretty. It's just like keycaps, artisanal keycaps for mechanical keyboards, which is another rabbit hole that I please, please don't get into the mechanical keyboard rabbit hole. <laughs> from someone who played who who fell into the mechanical keyboard rabbit hole I'll tell you what Shopee and Lazada are cursed because I ever since I learned about how to shop in Shopee and Lazada I bought tons of stuff I wish I didn't. <laughs> I had a mechanical keyboard phase. I had a pocket knife phase. I had a um, a survival EDC phase when when I had uh, when there was an earthquake that struck a couple of years ago. I was like, oh, I have to buy stuff that I should use to survive. I bought a pocket radio. I bought uh, MREs. I bought things that I would use to survive, and I ate the MREs. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. in person D and D is greater than online D and D. I was actually thinking of trying online D and D, but I don't know if that's something that I would like more than personal. But yeah, uh, what's this? So going back a bit further, uh. Swordberry says, I bulk bought dice and carried it in my bag every day so I could give it to new members. Wow, Swordberries, that was really nice of you. And we had calling cards to pass around in case people come in and ask what we were doing. Of course, of course the teachers would have thought it was suspicious, Swordberries. You were pushing dice. <laughs> you were pushing dice to other people and you were giving them calling cards. Of course people were gonna, th the teachers were gonna think, hmm. Is this what the kids are into now? <laughs> hey kid, you want some dice? Here's my calling card. <laughs> Is that what they're calling it now? These kids? They're selling... They're pushing dice. Say no to dice, <laughs> kids. <laughs> they have an anti-dice campaign. 
Okay, kids, here today we have Officer Juan de la Cruz from the local uh, precinto, from the local police department. He's going to teach you about the dangers of dice. <laughs> oh my goodness. So, yeah. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Myla says, in our entrepreneurship class, we could have sold sandwiches with surprise memory card in it worth the purchase. More storage in PlayStation 2, of course, Mylis. Oh goodness, back in the day when we had PlayStations and they still had separate memory cards and we did not have like the in-house, the in-machine hard drives. That was a thing back in the day. <clears throat> uh, going to the next comment here. I'll show you my dice sometime. I said, Crispy, sure. I would love to. I would love to see some dice. Dice pushers. <laughs> I'm sorry. Swordberry says, Sir J, I saw a pochi keycap last night. Oh, that's really cool. Nice, nice. And then Crispy says, Can you clean my mechanical keyboard? Uh, I'm not the best person to ask because I don't have compressed air. And you don't want to <laughs> don't want to look at my mechanical keyboard. The Pochi keycap, the forbidden Pochi. <laughs> Crispy says, Oh my god, you had a doomsday phase too. My close friend had that. It was hilarious. Yeah, looking back into it, I was it was pretty hilarious, but and I even now I still have like a pouch of all of my emergency stuff. I have a pocket knife, a flashlight, um, I have a grooming one, and then pss, whatever. Bunch of stuff. So Chris Swordberry says, some of the teachers wanted to join on your secret underground D&D &D club. Okay. And then, but the admin staff were boomers who thought D&D &D was cultic. Of course. Of course. They probably needed to call in the D.A.R.E. program, what, like what Crispy mentioned, the D.A.R.E. program, but with dice. <laughs> I remember back in the day, um... When when Harry Potter was still new, when Pokemon was still around, people people, you know, there were there were newspaper articles around about how it was like demonic. There were demonic influences behind it, and then you know it it caused you know it caused kids to go astray and stuff like that. You know, uh, and even the one that stood out to me recently. Is that I just want to point out that Sword Berries is also using the psionics, the psionics uh, wheezing emote. I think that's her because of the of the purple hair. Oh, Myla's gotta go, buddy. Laundry time. Enjoy the chat, everyone. Thanks again for stopping by, Myla's, and you go ahead and wash and have a good laundry. So. Going back, yeah, going back to the days when Harry Potter was new. Not only Harry Potter, but the Da Vinci Code. The Da Vinci Code, Angels and Demons, basically Dan Brown. All of his books were also treated as demonic because, you know, of all the influences and stuff like that, they could lead kids astray and stuff. Pokemon was also had that phase as well. And the one that I recently encountered, because I saw this on a Facebook post, was that, excuse me, Clash of Clans, the mobile game, Clash of Clans, was also seen in, in, a, in a Philippine Facebook post. It was like considered demonic because it was like summoning cult symbols and stuff like that. So it it caused that person, it was just like their opinion, but it was a wider set of opinions that, yeah, Harry Potter was demonic, what could lead you to evil because it taught you witchcraft. And then there was Pokemon <laughs> and a bunch of other things. Oh yes, oh my goodness, Milas, thank you for leaving this bit before you go. Aserehe was also considered demonic. Goodness gracious. Uh, for for context, Aserehe is the popular song called The Ketchup Song. Um, done by Las Ketchup. So, if you were a kid in the 90s, you would have been part of those dance crazes like like Mumbo number no. 5. Mom, Mambo. Mambo, not Mumbo. Mambo number no. 5. Or... What was that other one? Shucks. What were those dance crazes back in the day? The Macarena. The Macarena was definitely one. 
And even in Splatoon 3, I think they're doing the Macarena in the Splatfest. Um, I haven't played the Splatfest, but can you check? I think they did the Macarena, the random squids in the plaza. Anyway, so... What was this? So... Yeah. The Macarena, Mambo Number no. 5, and the Ketchup Song. I said, hey, ha, de hey, de hey, be to be hey, be to be nova, and DMCA. <laughs> so I will pause there. No more, no more singing. But yeah, that, that had a really bit of a controversial thing back in my, back in when I was still in school. Yeah. So, yeah. It, authority figures in, um, you know, when you grow up, you, some authority figures have just like their own weird way of doing this but again yeah let's let's just not dwell on it too much because we don't want to um that's not really what we're trying to get at but i understand your point it's just it's just weird <laughs> okay <laughs> a lot of things that you knew growing up some people will not like it and some people will make weird weird stories about it just to push that you don't like it I know. I hang out on Twitter a lot nowadays. <laughs> Twitter does weird, weird things. You know, I... I've seen a bunch of things happen on Twitter lately, especially around the VTuber space. Goodness gracious. Goodness gracious, I'm actually saying the VTuber space. As if I've been part of the VTuber community for a long time. <laughs> Even though I've only started doing this in like... Less than a couple of, less than a month, more than a month, just a month. Thank you for the hydrate redeem. Yes, don't forget, if you are watching, you can redeem some of those Svek coins that you have over there, and we could do some stuff with it. NFTs, Bitcoin, no. Invest in Svek coin. In Svek we trust. <laughs> Oh, so that's how DMCA works. It's only if you play the song that you get the DMCA. But if you sing it, okay, okay. So I guess it's safe for me to do karaoke streams too. So that's good to know. That's good to know. All right. And uh, but, 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 I, I'm trying to backtrack the chat, the, the chat here. See if we did anything here. But, 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 but. Oh yeah, cleaning the cleaning the uh, keyboard. If I if you don't have compressed air, just use regular air, or just blow on it, <laughs> like you would a cartridge. Just like in the family computer days or the NES. Goodness gracious, I didn't even have a proper NES growing up before I had a PlayStation. Um, we had a bootleg NES that my parents bought from Hong Kong. But it worked, and I had one of those cartridges that had like 37 games in it. And I was a happy kid. I loved playing Super Mario Bros. and Contra and a bunch of other things. But eventually, um, we couldn't play it anymore because the rats chewed on the cable. Ch rats chewed on the cable. It's not my dogs. It's, it's rats. So there's that. And then I only managed to get a PlayStation 1. Take note, a PlayStation 1 by saving up for it for three years. And I after I got it for like 4,000 pesos. And it's the small PlayStation. If you recall, there was like a big uh, rectangular PlayStation. I got the small PlayStation, which was like roundish. And I, it took me three years of saving to get that. And for the longest time, that was considered my biggest accomplishment in life. <laughs> I'm thankful now, though, that I have bigger accomplishments now that I am older, now that I'm working. But I will always look at that moment as a personal moment of pride for me. That after three years of saving my allowance, not buying anything from the school canteen, I was able to get a um, PlayStation 1 for myself in grade 6 right before I entered high school. And by the time I entered high school, I kept playing the PlayStation so much that my grades plummeted and I had to do tutorials. Uh, I had to go to tutors to make sure that I actually passed high school. 
because I went to a science high school. And for those of you who went to science high schools, it's tough. <laughs> it's tough. So yeah. Yep, I did. Um, I did uh, change my username actually, uh, Crispy, because I didn't want to attach the word Twitch to my name anymore. It it kind of felt long. It felt kind of felt awkward. So I decided just to put an underscore after my name. But this is the only time that you will see a difference in my usernames. If you want to check out my YouTube and my Twitter and all of my other social media, thankfully it's just Sergey Svek one word. But on Twitch, it's Sergey Svek underscore. All right. Um, karaoke streams are fine. Perfect. Perfect. We go. We go. We gon' be singing one of these days. <laughs> the question is, what kind of songs will I be singing? Who knows? I don't know. My music tastes are not updated. Did someone already take Sergey Svek? Okay. Story time, kitties. So. Here's what happened. A long time ago, I opened a Twitch account under the name Sergey Svek using one of my emails. But I forgot about it. And then when I decided to finally open to go back to Twitch, I forgot that I already opened the Sergey Svek account. And I used my current email address for this account right now. And I already, uh, what's this? I already had a few streams on, and then after I had those streams on Twitch, I discovered that, oh, the Sergey Svek account is here. So, and then I saw in Twitch's guidelines that if the person who used the name, for example, the original Sergey Svek, would um, delete their account after approximately six months, you can get it back. So that's what I did. I deleted the original account with the name Sergey Svek, and I used the name Sergey Svek Twitch for this account, this one, for not just six months, for at least or almost two years now. And still, the name Sergey Svek is not available. So my name has been denied to me by myself. I, I made my own problem. I am my own worst enemy. <laughs> I swear, if somebody, if somebody turns up with another Sergey Svek without the underscore, I'm going to find them. <laughs> Actually, no, I'm not. I I'm not that petty. But yeah, that's the long and short of what happened as to why I'm no longer able to use the name Sergey Svek without the underscore. Yep, I'm like the astronaut meme, or like that one where the guy pointing the gun at his own copy. You can't trust nobody, not even yourself. Like, past Sergey, what have you done? <laughs> you denied yourself your name. <laughs> but one of these days, I'm going to go try, um, uh, trying again. I'm gonna keep trying and trying and trying until I finally get my name, Sergey Svek. But the thing is, with Twitch, apparently it takes ages. I waited for at least six months, but like I said, my name does not is not available. So probably it's gonna take more years before they finally say, "Oh yeah, you can have the name Sergey Svek without the underscore." Yes. <laughs> I consider myself lucky to have sword berries free everywhere. That's good. That's good. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's good thing that you're able to use that, and nobody has taken that. Lucky, lucky. And um, I do sometimes wish that my name was a lot easier to pronounce. But at least for a number of the Philippine VTubers, they find it a lot. They, they, they're able to pronounce it like I pronounce it. So that's good. I'm happy to uh, see that at least when I pop into their chats. And they're like, Sir J. Spec. Like, yes. That's very validating, isn't it? So good. Sergey? No, no, no. That's that's the people who like who are not familiar with that. But yeah, it's spe it's pronounced the way it's spelled. Sergey Svek. Yeah. 
I've had people pronounce mine as Crispeya. <laughs> okay, I guess you could jump to that conclusion, but come on, it's crispy. Sir J's Vec. <laughs> You know, it's just like it's just like going to um, it's just like going to to your local Starbucks, and they pretty much and they pretty much oh, what's this? They all I don't know. If, I think it's deliberate at this point. I think they're doing it on purpose that they misspell your name so that people would take pictures of it on Instagram and then complain, but. That still brings the customers in. It has to be something they teach their new hires. Okay, you have to spell the name wrong. Okay? You have to spell it wrong so that people will continue taking pictures and complaining, but they will still keep people coming in. <laughs> okay, I'm the big brain. I cracked the code of Starbucks. <laughs> Woo! My goodness. I just hit my microphone, so just let me know if my voice sounds weird, okay? I, again, that's the reason why I did not have, um, I switched from a boom mic to a table mic before, because I didn't want to, you know, I, I do that, boom, I hit it, and then in my excitement. But I went back to the boom mic because I know I sound a lot better now, compared to the streams where I use the table mic. It's a lot better. I'm I'm a lot happier because when I used the table mic, I said, "God, Sergey, why do you sound like this?" Uh, but the mic is a Maono, uh, Maono, um, Maono podcast mic on a boom arm. So there's that. Yeah, see, it's a great marketing campaign because people people just take a photo. It's free marketing, and it's you're able to go ahead and get a snack out of that, right? So it's 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 big brain move. It's a big brain move by Starbucks, but we cracked the code on an episode of DJ Sergey. <laughs> oh goodness. And by the way, we're going to be having an ad break in a few seconds, so I just want to let you know that we the spectacular stream will be returning very shortly. So I will be running a 3-minute ad because Twitch but I just want to let you know that you'll be using this time to go ahead and get some snacks. And if you feel like um, staying, then I would appreciate your company. But you go ahead and do that. Yes, Swordberries, you are immune to ads. So for those of you who don't know, if you're a subscriber, you don't have to worry about ads. So if you like what you see, you want to see more of these streams, feel free to give me a follow. But you're not required to do this part. But if you want to, subscribe as well. So... Thanks very much, and we'll talk to you again in a bit.
Okay, and welcome back everybody to DJ Sergey. And um, just to do a very quick check, hopefully you can see, um, hear me well, that the mic is no longer buzzing. Can you give me a quick check, please? Just checking if the mic ain't buzzing, if we should be clear as well. Hopefully. All right. <laughs> No buzzes, good. All right, thank you, thank you. So again, see, that's the reason why I stopped using um, a boom mic for a while because again, the power of of my of my punches <laughs> destroy the mic. The mic is not strong enough. <laughs> but thank you, thank you for that. And yes, if you want to go ahead and uh, do that. Uh, feel free to go ahead and take a look at my artist Milas. I'm not sure if he's doing commissions right now, but if you feel like it, you know what to do. And uh, yeah, only buzz, no light, only light years, no buzz. That's good, but light year is okay. And you know what? Regarding the new movie Light Year that's coming, um, it's gonna be. Of course. Well, very, very good to see you all, Raiders from the Tuna Misashi channel. Good to see you. Good to see you. And thank you very much for the follow as well. Just had Weeb just Wad Weebus. Good to see you. Good to see you. And welcome everybody to the stream. You are here listening to Early Mornings with DJ Sergey. DJ Sergey. 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 Welcome and welcome and welcome, welcome, welcome in. Good to have you here. Good to have you here. And um, I hope that you're enjoying. And then thank you very much to Namisashi for bringing your community over to me. I appreciate it very much. And if you have, if you do have not yet followed Tuna Misashi, why don't you go ahead and give her a follow too. She is one of the inspirations actually for me wanting me me wanting to do more just chatting streams. So if you want to know more about um, love advice or just how to live, you know, live and then how to act, go follow Tuna Misashi. Okay? She it's amazing. Amazing. She, it's it's so good that I actually listened to her stream earlier when I was in the gym on the treadmill. So that's how good she is. So, and again, thank you everybody for dropping by, and thank you again to the f new followers, Just Wad Weebus and Kanye Wes. Kanye Wes, good to finally ha see you here, and I hope that you are doing well as well. And to all of the other others who are rating today, and uh, just um, checking the chat here. Uh, Sir J, you should give Milas the artist role. I actually did have give him the artist role and Twitch. So thank you for the reminder. And ba -ba 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 -ba. Bobab, thank you very much. A sword, yes, I, you're very familiar. And Tachikoma as well. Good to see you. Good to see you. Thank you very much. And Clerk, good to see you as well. Glad to have you he all here and coming into the channel. Good to have you. So. And going to Swordberries, I don't know how streamers are able to stay calm during rage. raids. To be honest, I panic every single time. I... I don't know it either. <laughs> I guess... I guess it... me... I don't know about how other streamers do it, but I've... I'm actually more comfortable dealing with when speaking to hundred... to a lot of people in a... in an auditorium. Because I have a history of public speaking, and I'm fine giving a speech, I'm fine hosting events or commentating, but if I have to sit here in my room and then I have to just talk to my OBS <laughs> and not knowing who is watching, I get scared. Because I don't know what to say really when there's no one, when I don't know if anyone's listening. But now, but when it comes back to your original question about rating, it's just, well, you just have to realize that these people are coming in and then you just have to keep doing your thing. Because if you panic and if you don't, and if you just suddenly say, oh, 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 what do I do? It's very hard. It's very difficult to deal with. But if you're able to get through that initial he hesitation, that initial surprise, just do what you do and then introduce yourself and let them see what you're truly capable of. That was a very long-winded um, explanation, but TLDR, 
stay calm, do your thing. <laughs> ah, my voice. <laughs> I am so sorry. My coach, my coach made me do some kicking like in Taekwondo earlier at the gym as my one of my last exercises. And I that brought back memories of PE and how I used to be an awesome yellow belt in Taekwondo. But now that I'm older, I can't even kick. <laughs> <laughs> that really, really got me tired with the breathing right there. <clears throat> so checking out here. Thank you, Sergey. You're very welcome to an amazing sheet. It's my way of giving back. And Canny Wes as well. You know what? We'll uh, do that as well. So Canny Wes as well. Also another streamer on Twitch. Good to have you here in the community as well. And... Uh, Hey, yes, Sergey. Sorry, I only got around to visiting now. I kept missing your streams. Hoo hoo. Your voice rolls like butter. Sheesh. And Tachikoma with the Wiggly. I really like the Wiggly emotes. I actually saw them in a couple of like Niji Sanji streams before, and I was really um, surprised at how really cute and adorable they are. So yeah, if you if you want to use some your own, um, if you want to use your own emotes, go ahead and use it. That's fine, you know. We don't have follower <laughs> emotes at the moment <laughs> in the channel because I'm I'm a newly minted affiliate, so I need to wait my turn. But in due time, we it'll be there. Uh, duh, 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 duh. Going back to the channel, Tuna Misashi says, "True, Ganda bosses ni Sergey. Oh, you're making me blush. <laughs> thank you, thank you." Solid bosses, Lodi. Hoo hoo, nice. Clerk says, and Clerk again. Your pictures of food are solid too. It brings it brings me back to the days when I used to do restaurant and food reviews some years ago, when I long before the pandemic happened, and when I had to do when I <laughs> when I had to work with uh, with Zomato and stuff. Those were the days. But I never did flat lay. I can't do flat lay. You know why? Because if you want to take good flat lay, you have to put everything on the table and then you stand on a chair and then balance yourself on a chair and then take pictures. Ako, I can't do that. <laughs> I'm scared. Me, a 200 pound guy on a chair, and sometimes the chairs in the restaurants are not that strong. No way. <laughs> I'm scared. <laughs> Ako, my specialty when it comes to taking pictures in food, I just take up close because I want them to see every fiber in that steak, in that every crumb from that piece of bread. So good. That's my specialty. Uh, tuna wiggles, they're really, really good. Crispy with a pop, 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 pop emote. I like that one too. Tachikoma says Saktong Radio DJ and since we're gonna go ahead and do that since this is a radio DJ thing but shout out the man guy Tachikoma Manga 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 Sir Javian Maka ka Sir Javian Musa naman kayo ngayong Sabado Ika limang araw ng Nobyembre I don't know what 2022 is in Tagalog but yeah, <laughs> Pasok, Di Umano, <laughs> and a bunch of other stuff. Yeah, it's comforting too. I'm just listening, and it does make me miss using the radio. Ah, that's very nice to hear, Crispy. Thank you. Size nine, size nine, yellow gums. <laughs> oh wait, I think I did it wrong. Hold on. There we go. That's good. That's good. That's working. Yeah, I, I do like this um, this method of shouting out that Twitch has because that means that people are able to instantly click on the follow button if you are interested. So yeah, it's really good. Really good. And again, thank you everybody, uh, Tuna, for bringing your community over to me. Uh, 402069 Tuna Radio. DJ Tuna, DJ Sergey. <laughs> We should pretty. I I don't know. I I this was brought up in yesterday's episode, but they said you know you should do a podcast, um, Sergey, and I did uh, talk to my good friends Ren Connect and Milus, who are also my mods, 
and I said, you know, we should try, we should try uh, a podcast too. But I was like, are you sure you want to do that? We don't even know what to talk about. <laughs> but if you visit my YouTube channel, actually, shameless plug, if you visit my uh, YouTube channel, you will actually see on the front page, I think it's still there, my um, a couple of videos that my friend, that Mylas and Ren and I did, where we were reviewing um, Reddit memes, actually. And then we were talking about how waffles are superior to pancakes and how, how much we despise Ampalaya. You can make me eat whatever, but you cannot make me eat ampalaya and enjoy it. I'm sorry. I know they keep saying stories that, oh no, ampa the ampalaya you eat is bad just because it's not prepared properly. We have done everything, or at least my mother has done everything that she could to make the ampalaya taste good based on what she learned from TV and the internet, but it still doesn't taste good. So if someone can actually make the ampalaya that actually tastes good, then please, let me know. <laughs> Crispy is vehemently saying, it's not good, it just isn't good. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. Yeah, ampalaya, it do be like that sometimes. It do be like that sometimes. If, if you like ampalaya, I'm sorry. That's just one of the differences that we will have to accept with each other. <laughs> And you know what, Tachikoma? That's actually a thing. I uh, try. My mom likes to have scrambled egg with ampalaya and tomato. It still doesn't taste good. <laughs> the paitness is still there. It's just there. It won't go away. <laughs> Why? <laughs> oh my goodness. But again, you just endure it. You know what? I'd rather go back to the gym right now <laughs> than endure eating ampalaya. Goodness gracious. The things that you have to do. The things that you do to be healthy are not good. Are, are not are not that fun, you know? Um It's kind but then again, it's kinda like it's kinda like how I have my coffee, you know? When I before the pandemic happened, I kept drinking Yung Copico Blanca or Nescafe 3 in 1. So those are super super sweet. You know, super super sweet and sugary, but and after a while, um, I became that helped also in making me big. And after a while, they decided, you know what? Let's try black coffee. And I could not handle it. After I had to put sugar first, I put some honey then, and then after a while, I just had the black coffee. And you know what, Tuna Misashi, if you're still there, this line is a hugot that I that I really like to say whenever I have uh, my coffee. When they when they talk about my coffee, <clears throat> you know what? I like to have my co I like my coffee how I like my relationships. Bitter in the beginning, but sweet in the end. Bittersweet. Nox. <laughs> Woo! Oh my goodness. You know, in my old Instagram account before I changed it to Sir J Svek. I saw bo Tachikoma. That's not the right word to say. Hindi boom. Bow. <laughs> if if in America they say thank you for coming to my TED talk. In the Philippines we have bow. <laughs> <sighs> you know, you know, I am who got naman this guy. Hey, you know, back in my day, when I was still doing my food reviews, they, my my name before Sir J Svek, my Instagram account was called Hungry Hugot. Why? Because I ate a lot of food and I love to make hugot. Because that's what the kids like, apparently. Why bow? Tachikoma asks. Well, that's the thing, you know, how. Again, this is probably me showing my age, but it's like, you know, when you make a presentation and then you say, or you say your speech at, in elementary school, and thank, thank you very much, bow. They don't just bow, they also say the word bow. <laughs> and that's it. 
like in America, they have mic drop or they have uh, thank you for coming to my TED talk. So yun, that's that's what we're that's where we're coming from. Um, going back to what Tachikoma said, uh, boil it longer so it can finally go away. That a bit of the of the paitness of the ampalaya, yeah. Or or for those of you who don't know Tagalog, it's bitter gourd, bitter gourd. I just forgot the scientific name. And then duh, 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 just going through the chat. Oh wait, Crispy said. No, I have heard of bow. <laughs> I don't know why they say it. They just do it. But, yeah, see, some people just say bow. Okay. Well, kakanood din natin ng Japanese. Eh. What do you mean by that part, Tachikoma, regarding that? So, but yeah, we'll we'll uh, we'll get back to that in a bit. But yeah, we went through a lot of topics today, which is which is something that I I really prefer. <laughs> You know, when I start these shows, I really, I really try to say, I have a plan, I have a, a topic, but sometimes I don't know what to say after. So I'm thankful for everybody who dropped by, who is leaving the comments, because that way I'm able to play off of it and go a lot longer than I thought I would. So thank you. Ah, Japanese. Is it the bow? They usually bow after presentations and stuff. Yeah, that's true. They bow. I had that phase too, you know. I would bow after talking to people, but not like Japanese, like bow from the hip, but more like, but more like, hmm, bow, nod my head like that. It happens, you know. So it was my way of giving respect, like that. No worries, mate. Virtual appear. Nax. Virtual appear. There we go. <laughs> no, I don't go that low, thankfully. <laughs> People will know. People will know. Goodness gracious, that you've been watching too much anime. And speaking of anime, since, mo since you're now here, I just want to make a point to tell you that I do have plans of going to cosplay Matsuri in um, December. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, yeah, I'm gonna. I plan to go to cosplay Matsuri, and then hopefully I can find someone to actually make my rainbow jacket that you see here, so that I can cosplay as myself. So if you see somebody that has this outfit in um, cosplay Matsuri, go ahead and um, feel free to approach me. That's fine. Oh, Crispy, you won't be able to make it. No, you'll be in Sydney. Well, you'll be in my thoughts, Crispy. I, w I, I really wanted to be able to join you in ESGS because I love, I loved how your hat looked. That was a really nice hat, I'll say. People love the hat. I saw your, your Twitter, the Twitter posts. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. Going back to the chat. Baka mag egg roll tayo. <laughs> Sashimi, good to have you here. Sorry if I didn't. I just saw. Have you ordered Song of the Mango and other new Miss? Is that a game? Sashimi? Or um, is that some. Or what is that exactly? I'm not sure. <laughs> Streamer costume it is. You know, that's the reason why I designed this bottle because I wanted to make it easy for people to uh, for people to cosplay as me. But if you saw my emotes, if you have my emotes in the chat right now, I'll um it's just a red shirt, it's just this hat, this Russian Oshanka hat, fingerless gloves which you can buy from SM department store and some headphones. But if you look at it, it's really really ordinary actually. Too ordinary. So by the time I, I decided, you know what, let's add the jacket. And the jacket seemed to be on brand. But not a lot of people are able to sell this rainbow jacket. So as you can see, thank you Sashimi for demonstrating. Um, subscribers have my emotes where I don't have the jacket as of now. So there's that. Uh, what else? So I actually asked around and they said that if I want to get a custom jacket 
designed like this. I'll have to like go to DV or Divisoria for that. No, I'm not sure if that's really if that's really true, but I would any help that you could provide to let me get this jacket in time for cosplay Matsuri would be a big big help. Uh, let me go back and check the chat here. Art paper. <laughs> Art paper, low cost cosplay. <laughs> I love that. Um, for I love that definitely. Let's exchange stickers somehow. We could we could do like LBC if ever. Look <laughs> at Um, it's just gonna be those designs that you see that Sashimi made. Um, I don't really have fancier emotes at the moment, but yeah, you could have a lolling Sergei Svek on your <laughs> on your stuff. But yeah, I do like your little gremlin um, mode as well. It's really nice. Let's see what else. PM Yunalang via FB. Okay, thank you very much for that. Yeah, have a jacket tailor made. Just like how I wish I had a tailor made barong, but my goodness. Custom made barongs are expensive. Goodness gracious. Um. I have a barong. I, I'm, I think if you saw my Twitter earlier, I posted a picture of me with po putting my barong on my bed because I have an event in the in the coming week where I have to wear a barong. And uh, pop, 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 pop. and it's good. I'm actually able to fit into the barong, thankfully. The only problem is that uh, the only problem is that the collar is way too tight. Uh, whenever I wear uh, polo dress shirts or barongs, I may be able to fit the barong against my belly, but it's always too tight around my neck. So I can't breathe. <laughs> I can't breathe. So that's why I always have the top button undone so I can actually breathe. And I need that if I'm going to be hosting with a barong. And that's why sometimes I just wear my polo barongs because in my workplace, um, my I when I became fatter because of my of my food reviews because again, not only was I taking pictures, I was eating a lot of food every day. I had to I grew a lot bigger, so I ended up buying a lot of polo barongs, the short sleeve ones from Landmark, much cheaper than. Uh, SM definitely, <laughs> but probably not as cheap as DV. And I bought it, and then I bought a bunch, and that became like my everyday office wear. Unfortunately, my coworkers tended to tease me as, you know, "Oi, congressman, congressman," or "Oi, are you a driver?" <laughs> Gosh, are you the driver of the congressman, or are you the congressman? Like, goodness gracious! Wow. Anyway, um, going back to this one, Crispy says, I actually never had the hat when I when the little gremlin was made. Luckily, it was made to fruition, so I wish the same for you and your Technicolor dream jacket. Thank you, Crispy. Um, if if you if the person who made your hat is available in the Philippines or within the Metro Manila area, um, I would appreciate if you could uh, let me know so we could try and um, get in contact. And hopefully we can have the jacket made by then. Lamau driver, Sashimi says. <laughs> yeah, um, that's that's unfortunately what happened, you know. Um, but I got over it because my boss at the time said, dress for the role that you want, not don't dress for the role that you currently have. So there's that. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, I was, I became a lot more confident when I wore my polo barongs to work. And it was actually very easy because I, uh, what's this? It's a lot easier than, than ironing because when I used to have my regular polos, I had to iron them every weekend and it was so boring so I decided to buy a polo barong just wash it and then let it hang and then you're good you're good so it's all good no shame in being a driver for real for real no cap definitely definitely not but I'm like I just don't like being teased in general you know
Oh boy. Um, I just got a message. Someone brought brought some lunch and then it's hamburger curry rice. Oh my goodness. So tempting. I, I don't know about you. I don't really, I prefer, when it comes to the battle of curry, there's like um, Southeast Asian, which is the one with coconut milk. And then there's the Japanese, which is the savory sauce. And then there's the Indian, which is um, spicier with, uh, sometimes with butter, sometimes with ghee and such. But for me, I don't really like Japanese curry that much, but the only time I would like it is if it is with burger, with um, hamburg, with burger steak, in short. I'll eat them all, thank you. <laughs> Sashimi, you will be in competition with my friend Ren Kanek. I'm thankful Ren Kanek is not here because if he hears me saying bad things about Japanese curry or anything Japanese, he will have words to say <laughs> about that. He's not here, right? Ren? <laughs> Ren, you're not here, right? Ren? Marie is the best is the best idol from Splatoon. Callie is not good. <laughs> okay, Ren is not here. That's good. <laughs> All right. Don't mess with Ren's waifu in Splatoon. But, 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 but let's just go in for the chat. Crispy had curry hamburg steak yesterday. Didn't like the texture, but it tasted good. I see, I see. Okay. Japanese curry feels like eating meat with lots of gravy. Actually, yes. And you know what? Since you mentioned that sashimi, I do wish one of these days I will actually be able to go to Koko Ichibanya. Because that seems to be like the restaurant if you want to eat Japanese curry. I really want to try it just so I can see, you know what? What's this like? Just, just once. <coughs> but I probably have to be by myself because I don't think my family appreciates curry as much as I do. <laughs> Especially the Japanese style. Cali slander? Oh no! Oh no! Goodness gracious! We we have oh no! Crispy is watching. She knows about Callie and Marie. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious! But yes, it looks like it's already ten forty-five. It is Saturday, November 5, 2022 at 10.45 a.m. That time check was brought to you by the Sergevian Nation Radio, held by DJ Sergey, CJ, Sergey, Sergey, Sergey. You will not call tolerate Cali slander on this stream? Well, you don't have to worry, Crispy, because I will be wrapping up this stream right now. Actually, I'm, I'm a bit tired already. I have work later tonight, but, and I have to worry about a... Oh, uh, what's this? Uh, you know, stuff. But I So before we go, we have one question left. But I must ask Zvek, Shiver, Fry, or Big Man? I... I stand shiver in this house. But if we're talking about the upcoming Splatfest, I'm gonna side with Big Man. If it's a matter of your Pokemon starter being grass, fire, or water, I'll pick water this time. I mean, look at my motif. It's all about water. I'm the color surfer PNG tuber, so of course I'm gonna pick my element. And besides, I'm a Bruce Lee fan, so be water like water, my friend. <laughs> There we go. So this is just me winding down and I want to thank again everybody for dropping by and appreciate again Tuna Misashi for bringing your community over to me. I appreciate you and for all the follows as well. Just Wad Weebus and Kani Wes, glad to have you all in the stream now. And also Kuro, thank you again also for the follow as well. And uh, Crispy is a team grass, so you are definitely part of the Shiver team as well. <laughs> Maybe next time. By default, I pick Shiver, but now I pick Big Man. And of course, it's pretty much a tradition at this point. We're going to go ahead and look for someone to raid. We're going to pass on this Sergevian delegation to another streamer. 
And I do have an idea who we're going to be raiding already for now. Let me just double check if they're still online. Yes, they are. Yeah, we're going to be raiding another VTuber. He's not, he's not a Philippine VTuber, but he is someone that is very close to me. Very, very, um, very uh, good friend of mine. So here's my raid message. I wish I could put one with my emotes on it, but we're gonna we're gonna stick to the default <laughs> for now. And yeah, we're gonna be raiding uh, Soulless Husk. So he is currently playing Dark Souls 2. So if you want to see someone who plays Dark Souls a lot better than I do, go ahead and check him out. So I would like to thank everyone again for dropping by and making me uh, and visiting me on a, this episode of DJ Sergey. And um, hopefully I brought a little bit of color to your day as well. Then once again, you take care, always stay safe, and maybe I'll talk to you again next time. On Sunday, I'm going to be streaming at 6 p.m. I'm probably going to be streaming Splatoon or... Dark Souls 1. So we'll see. I'll go ahead and make a schedule and then we'll figure out what to do. So if you haven't followed me yet on Twitter, go ahead and uh, follow me there. The links are in available in my Twitch info and we'll go ahead and talk next time on another episode of DJ Sergey. DJ Sergey Sergey. Bye now.